for too many years, Sebastian Seabass Seats has slipped under the radar of the collective surf media. Always in the mix, Seabass just never quite managed to capture center stage. But all that has changed. Ending his 2012 tour campaign with a bang, making back-to-back -back finals, winning in Haleiwa, and the overall Triple Crown. And qualifying for the 2013 World Tour, Seabass has found his competitive group. Competing is fun when you're winning. <laughs> uh, every heat that you come out of the water and you made it or won the heat, you're just that much more excited and that much more stoked. I did my first WQS when I was 18, so six years. And uh, yeah, that's, that's quite a long time, but um, yeah, I think if I would have got on any earlier, I kind of wouldn't be ready. I've gone through like the up and downs of contest living, so uh, yeah, I think I'm mature enough and ready to hit the tour and um, yeah, I'm psyching. I just try to be calm. I think uh, the, the saying I say over in my head before I'm getting ready for heat is from The Last Samurai, too many mind. Just, um, you know, mind of competitors, mind of ocean, mind of conditions, thinking about your boards. Just let it all go and uh, yeah, when it comes down to it, it's surfing, it's what you love and no matter how nervous you are before the heat, when you hit the water, you just it all disappears and you just go in straight into surf mode and you're just out there just you and mother nature and just try to, yeah, surf against myself. There's definitely things throughout my life that have pushed me to you know, get where I am. Probably Andy passing away probably made me really want to get on there because he's been such an inspiration to me. And um, yeah, just uh, there's so many good surfers from Kauai that are so underground and like never got sponsored, never got noticed. So uh, yeah, I'm stoked to be just kind of on there, pulling the weight for those guys. Despite Seabass's recent run of success, it's from humble beginnings that he developed into the surfer he is today. Yeah, I was uh, six years old and I was, uh, I was at Hanalei Pier and it was just this perfect little right. My brother pushed me and I just stood up and just streaked the whole way to the beach and I was just hooked from then on. And When I was 10 years old, I moved away from Kauai and I lived in New Hampshire for two years and sailed from New Hampshire down to Florida. That took another two years. So from 10 to 14, I didn't really surf at all. And then uh, we finally moved back to Kauai and started surfing again when I was 14. And um, yeah, I didn't really get into the NSSAs too much. Didn't ever have a amateur title, NSSA title. Yeah, I just uh, late bloomer, I guess. <laughs> video when I was uh, 10 through 14 growing up on the boat in, in New Hampshire and I couldn't surf and I just had these Mick videos that I was just like so mesmerized by his surfing that when I did start surfing again I think I kind of like started mimicking him. I would pay money for boards and leashes, grip pads, everything just to go surf on a regular basis at home and I get paid to do it so I'd just rather be a professional surfer than any other thing in the world. I think I have the best job in the world. It's something I'll do for my whole life. It's pretty much who I am. It's given me everything I got and I still think it's as fun as the first day I ever did it. And um, yeah, I hope it lasts as long as possible and um, yeah, I'll try to do everything I can with my nutrition and my body to make it last as long as I can. Who can be like myself, either a male or female?